this exclusive powerful documentary is intended to shock and expose the real horrific truths of Jimmy Savile and the British establishment cover-up of institutionalized paedophilia throughout the UK. In conjunction with Pie and Mash Films, the award-winning documentary Filmmakers, which exposes the real truths without any cover-ups, so therefore showing and telling you the true reality behind the fog stream that the mainstream media generally do not show you on normal TV. You need to watch the full interview documentary and you will be horrified to learn the real truths. We have placed exclusive links within this video description below. Please leave your comments after watching the full documentary and also please subscribe as there will be many more powerful documentaries on this subject coming here soon. Thank you. With me, Bill Maloney, and we're going to have a pretty serious debate this afternoon about what's happening in this country with regard to children. Uh, for those of you who don't know Bill, he's um, a, a well-established filmmaker. He's made some very, very hard-hitting um, videos to do with um, abuse of children, um, not only um, from a sexual or physical abuse nature, but what, what's been happening to children within the corrective establishment. Uh, Bill, you're a victim yourself, which you'll tell us a bit, a bit, bit about in a minute. But what we're going to do is uh, wave an introduction. We've got a very short little clip, which is from one of your films, but it's just talking about what you're about. So we'll hear that, and then we'll have a look at some of the um, film material that you've produced. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk a bit about yourself, and then we'll move on to uh, looking at what's actually happening in UK. So let's see what comes up. Award-winning film director Bill Maloney has dedicated his skills to fight against institutional child abuse. His whole family were brought up and abused in the British care system. In this film, his intention is to allow the victims to speak for themselves in a working-class manner that represents his own culture. Bill's technique to comprise a bigger picture into the smaller frame that the public are often shown breathes life and thought-provoking images into the film that you are about to watch. The children are the future. God bless them all. So there we are. That was just a few words about us. The children are the future. God, well, they God are. bless them all. Yeah, yeah. they are. They, the children are the future, Brian. Um, I don't think we showed the actual clip there. That was just the... Um... No, that was just the little sound introduction because I think it was a very interesting statement yeah. as to... Uh, well, well um, you know, we've, um, children are the future, and we are the keepers of this planet, the blue planet, and they are the future keepers of the planet. Yeah. Now, you know, when you've got, we've got a population in this country of about 68 million, and we've got a third of people that have been abused. Yeah. Now, you're never going to have the beautiful world that we all keep talking about and dreaming about until we sort it out right at the beginning, and that is the children. And, um, you know, with the Jimmy Savile, yeah, well, that's focused yeah. things, hasn't it? Jimmy Savile has, has really put things, a big yeah. rock in the pond at the big moment. Big time, big time. You know, we were talking about Jimmy Savile. We've been talking about Jimmy Savile for years, and there is a picture of um, Jimmy Savile at Hope de la Grand. I believe it's on David Icke's site, and there is a young blonde girl at the top of the picture, at the top of the pyramid of children that um, Jimmy Savile is sitting beneath, and that is my sister Diana, God rest her soul, who was killed, um, I believe. Um, just after, two weeks after we released the film, Sun, Sea and Satan, to, um, to the national media and to the BBC uh, broadcasting media. And um, she was found dead in her apartment. And the cause of death to this day, after nearly four years, is still cause of death unascertained. Right, and that film was about Jersey. 
That was about, about Jersey. That, that was about Haute de Lagarine on the island of Jersey, where we uncovered evidence that has never been disclosed by the BBC, though they are well aware of it. Um, ITV, all, all the national newspapers, no one has ever mentioned St. Saviour's Mental Institution. Now, St. Saviour's Mental Institution was a 600-bed a mental institution, um, which was literally... Um, a sort of a, a, a minute drive right. at 30 miles an hour from Haute de la Garenne. Now, uh, children from um, Haute de la Garenne, when a visiting psychiatrist from St. Saviour's Mental Institution used to visit Haute de la Garenne, he would warn them, you keep quiet about your, your, your allegations of child abuse, otherwise you will wind up in the yeah. nuthouse. Right. Now, it, I can't understand why St. Saviour's was never... Um, investigated. investigated. Yeah. But the interesting thing about it, Brian, is what um, uh, 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 isn't um, put across by our national media is that two years before the investigation started proper at Haute de la Garenne, right. um, Haute de la Garenne was given a £2.1 million budget for renovation work. That's when they cleaned up. At the same time, two years before the investigation, St. Saviour's Mental Institution was given an extension to it, right. even though it was closing down. Right. So they got rid of a lot of evidence now. Um, and you know what? Our, what my aim is is to put people, the public, into this world, which is so shocking it seems unreal and almost as if it's um, it's a movie, a film, it's a, like movie. a film, yeah. a movie. Yeah. But you know, when I when I first started uh, making films, you know, like you say, I, I was an abuse victim. So by the time I was um, by the time I was twenty, I'd served fourteen years in um, different institutions in this country, mainly yeah. um, sort of you know children's homes, young offenders institutions, um, Catholic institutions, etc. And my seven siblings were all abused as well. My sisters, my brother, my brother Peter. Um, that is another in interesting story. My, my brother, um, Peter, he was only 17, and um, I, I'm sort of three years younger than him. So um, he died, allegedly, he took an overdose and killed himself in a squat in Tunbridge Wells. But what never came out at the inquest was that my brother Peter was under the wing, under the arm of um, um, the, the Pilkingtons, the glass people. Right. Now, one of the Pilkingtons, um, he, he, he became a sir, actually. Um, he used to, well, what he said was that he used to like taking kids from the lower class areas, young, right. that were artists, Brian, and he would encourage them, etc., etc. Well, my brother Peter went on that route, and he came out as a heroin addict, and like I say, he was found dead. So the work, are, you know, that, that's what motivated me for the work, because my, my parents were Irish immigrants. They came over here in the 50s. My mother was abused by, in the Catholic institutions in Ireland. So was my father. When they came over here, social services took eight children away from them. That's all of, all of your family. That, is yeah. all, that was all my family they took away. Right. And then, um, you know, so it, it was horrific. And that's why I started making the, the, these films. So what, what was the first film you produced? Well, uh, first of all, I, you know, I started off in the, in the short film industry because I had to learn my trade, you know. Mm. Um, so, I, you know, I, I started making short films. Those normally, I, my films are normally about 15 minutes, you know. Most right. of the short films are only sort of three minutes, but I do go on a little bit, you know. Yeah. So um, I, I think I made seven of those, and I won quite a few awards for, throughout Europe um, for the films. And then I was asked to be involved in the football factory, um, but I, I turned away from that. Um, that, that was a proper... Um, that was a drama, but, you know, after I decided it, it came out of the, um, the short films, because the short films lead you into doing your first feature. Right. When you do your first feature, you need a budget. So the Football Factory was, a fe was to be a feature? The Football right. Factory was a feature, and the right. Football Factory sure. made five, fifth, thir £35 million. Pounds. So I made right. the right choice there, didn't I, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, now, um, I turned that down, because I'd, I'd made a film called Lunatic, and I took that to... Um, uh, to the, uh, it was they asked us if we could, we, we they could use it in a New York International Film and Video right. um, Festival. So we went out to New York to represent the film, and we won Best International Feature out there. Um, but it was a drama, 
Uh, it's called Lunatic because it was about a guy whose life was um, revolved around the moon cycle, you know, because we're fluid, and when you think about the tides with the moon, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. um, and then I made a, um, an, uh, another film um, called The Blunderers, which was um, uh, about a recovering 50-year-old black mm -hmm. crack cocaine addict from right. London and a 50-year-old white um, recovering alcoholic, and they lived in a, in, a, in a small hut on the beach on right. the Kent coast. And it was a comedy, you know, but it still had lots of social issues in it. And it was called a blunder because whatever these two guys done, they, they messed it up. Yeah. Um, and then well, it was when I went to New York, actually, Brian, um, to, to represent the, the film Lunatic. That, um, I, I so when, I, when was this, just time-wise? Uh, well, that was probably about six years ago right. when, when I was out there. But then I started doing, I, when I was in New York, uh, I went into Harlem. I went into Harlem one night, got a little bit drunk, and um, yeah. there was, um, all of a sudden, a mobility scooter was coming towards me. I was, on, I was in Bro on Broadway, and I was making my way back down into right. Harlem, and um, a, a mobility scooter came towards me, and it was a, the biggest black guy I've ever seen in my life. And um, anyway, I got talking to him, as I do on the street, you know, I talk to people yeah. on the street a lot. And um, he said to me, uh, hey Bill, he said, um, do you want to come for a drink with me? So I, I, went, I went for a drink with him, went into Harlem, and then decided, after that night, by talking to this guy, um, I decided to go into documentary filmmaking. Right. Because I'd heard about what happened at Hope de la Garenne, and it triggered, and, and those of you that are victims out there, you understand triggers. Yeah. So it triggered things in me when I, when I was on the streets, you know, and I was seeing the poor people. And as I was talking to the poor people, the blacks, the Hispanics, and whoever else, um, I, I found out that a lot of them had been abused right. when they were kids. So from, from there, and when, also, sorry, when I was out in New York, I'd heard about Haute de la Grande. So when I was out there, I incorporated a piece into the film, Billy and Lily Go to New York. Right. When I came back to England, I done the comparison with the people living on the streets in London. So that was Billy and Lily go to New York. Yeah. That film was done. But two weeks after I got back from, uh, from, um, from New York, I, I flew out to Jersey because of what was going on at Hope de la Garenne. And my sister Diana, um, she, was, she, was, she said to me, they used to take me out to Jersey. So, um, and, and I was abused out there, Bill, you know, because Jersey was first disclosed around the sea cadets, you know, for allegations from the, from the sea cadets. So I went out to Jersey and um, uh, I can't really, uh, people say what was it like out there, it's very difficult to describe Jersey because there is an inherent um, child abuse culture out there. And you know, what, what I would like to say is when people think about child abuse, you know, they think about a grope or, or you know, even, even a sexual encounter, but there is more to it than that. Yeah. There is the psychological, you fracture people psychologically. You fracture them um, physically. Yeah. They then become dysfunctional and possibly become abusers themselves. Yeah, so there's or a cycle that starts. There is a terrible cycle, Brian. You yeah. know, they start self-medicating. They will medicate with alcohol, with, with drugs, you know, like cocaine. Um, and then, it, so they'll have the drink, they'll have the cocaine. Then we have the come down. Then they use the cannabis or they'll use the, the, the whatever sedatives they can. Um, then um, I, I um, you know, I, I made this film. But the strange thing about this film, um, Sun, Sea, and Satan, which I urge everyone to Absolutely, see. Absolutely, yeah. You know, um, the strange, the strange thing um, about that film was when um, my sister's inquest came up. On the very morning of her inquest, I had an email from the Jersey police asking for a copy of Sun, Sea, and Satan, which I refused because I know they'd already seen it. Yeah. So you think this was a sort of message, a cocky message yeah. to you, was it? Well, yeah. it, wasn't, it wasn't just that. It wasn't just that email. Uh, you know, if you, if you can just hold on to the fact that it was my sister's inquest. Mm. And then I get this email asking for a copy of the film. And then I have a row with um, the, the, the coroner, uh, because she is protecting her assistant who gave us false information. Um, and um, also there was a double page article in the Irish World about Sun, Sea and Satan. Mm. So oh, I thought this is a real coincidence, you know. Anyway, the, that, that inquest was adjourned because it really kicked off 
in there. You know, they, you know, there was so many discrepancies. And people, you can go onto um, Pine Mesh Films and you can read my sister's timeline and it, it will tell you exactly what happened. Um, so, to me, that was the institutions saying to me, listen, Billy boy, we know what you've been through, we know what you're like, we know you. We controlled your mind. We controlled your family. Mm. But fortunately um, for, for me, at the time, the, you know, the, the, the institutions didn't like it, but um, I was a bit of an escapist, you know, so wherever they put me, I tried to escape. Right. Um, I refused to work. You know, I was put into, when, when I was in a detention centre, I just refused to work. So they put me in solitary confinement. I was there for two weeks, and then that was going on. Anyway, I got out of that place. Um, and... Um, you know, like I say, without, we don't want to swerve too much around the Jimmy Savile. What's happening at the moment? And um, well, we're going to be we're going to be coming back on to yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so I, I had a tough upbringing, and right. I seem to have come out quite strong. Um, yeah. You know, though I do have my times. I have my moments, people. You know, I have my dark moments, and um, I self medicate as well. Sometimes, you know, if I go really mad, maybe once every couple of months, I'll I'll drink, and mm. um, I'll use cannabis. And, um, but not cocaine, amphetamine or anything like that, you know. So it's each of their own. So, I, you know, I do need to sort of... Something to, to soften it. Yeah. To okay. soften it. To, yeah. uh, to, to soften yeah. it for the horrors. Yeah. Um, so child abuse is not just um, about old men in um, dirty old coats, you know what I mean? This, no. the, we're now talking with Jimmy Savile. We're talking about politicians coming into the, uh, to, into the affray. We're talking about um, secret service people coming into the affray. There were secret service people going to Hope de la Garenne and politicians from other countries, mm. and they were abusing children. Mm. And some of them were paying to murder children. Mm. Babies, whatever they could get. The young girls who were there. A lot of them, if the, if the guys would go there and they wanted to have sex with the young girls, they wouldn't want to wear a condom. So some of these girls would get like pregnant as well. Um, and um, you know, again, the mental so institution. I, we can say we know we know there are going to be viewers and listeners mm. today who are going to find the topic we're talking about incredibly difficult to listen to. Yeah. But this is the reality of what's going on, and of course, it's an area which we consistently see that the, the mainstream press and media will not get into the, into the depth of these they, issues. They, they won't get into the depth no. of the issues? Right? Yeah. Wanna, um, well, what I wanted mm, to do mm. is I'm just going to uh, call up on the screen. We've got uh, your home page from Pyre Mass Films. Um, so, first of all, we, we, we're going to be talking through things with Bill here today. Mm. Um, and obviously we can only do so much in the time, but what we'd like to encourage viewers and listeners to do is to actually get onto uh, his website, um, have a look at the films. Please um, have a look at those films yourself. I can tell you that some of them are deeply harrowing. You have to make yourself watch them, but we need to watch them because if we don't do it, we're not actually picking yeah, up the truth of exactly. what's going on. Right, so if I What, what do we um, got? The top line here, yeah, Bill. Take us through the films oh, okay. then. Go on then. So um, is, the, is the pen visible there? No, no. Oh, okay. Top left. Okay, so let's say top left, um, the first film, Billy and Lily Go to New York. That's the film I was just talking about. That's my co-filmmaker, Lily Star. We both went out there um, to represent the film Lunatic and this is the film that we started to shoot when we was out there. Anyway, that is it in its glory. The next one, The Blunderers, that was when I was um, a dramatic filmmaker, you know, I wasn't in, in, involved in documentary, though this film, The Blunderers, still has lots of social issues in it. The next, the third film is G20 Raw. Now this was at the G20, um, when uh, myself and Lily, we were kettled for two days outside um, the Bank of England, but um, you know, we was the only camera crew that would stay in amongst and with the crowd, and um, they loved us for that. Um, then we, this is Lunatic, this was the, um, the gangster sort of film, Gangster Without a Gun, that um, I took out to New York. Then the next film, Sun, Sea and Satan, this is a horror documentary. This is about the goings on at Hope de la Garenne Children's Home on the island of Jersey. And I think we're going to talk a little bit more yeah, about Yeah, we will, that. yeah. Now the, the next one, Adam Rickwood and the Medamsley Heroes, is about a young guy, he was 14 years of age, and his nickname was Titch because he was so small. And his name was Adam Rickwood. He was found hanging in his cell in a young offenders institution run by Serco. 
Um, and he was found hanging in his cell five years ago, I believe now. Five years ago, he was found hanging in his cell. He had a broken nose and a broken wrist. First inquest was null, null and void because the coroner was completely crooked. And he was even told that and told to stand down from the inquest. And then they put another coroner in. His, his name, I believe, was Mr. Tweedle or Tweedle. He was the first coroner. Then the, they put the second coroner in. When the second coroner came in, the first thing he'd done was banned son, uh, um, uh, Adam Rickwood and the Medemsley Heroes film. He banned that film right, until yeah. after the second inquest because he said it will prejudice the inquest. Right. I said, he said, but after the inquest, you can put it back up. So I thought, well, that means if he's saying I can put that film back up, he already knows what is happening because that film covers it. So then we come to uh, Forward Forever the Heroes. Now I was brought up in Brixton, Peckham and Lewisham or Brixton, Peckham and Lewisham, as okay. I say. All right. Yeah. Now Forward Forever the Heroes are about ethnic minorities that have been killed in police custody. And there's been quite a few thousand of them and no police officers have been brought to task for it. This, the next one, street politicians, was on the day of the last election. I went onto the street and I asked, I think it was around about five, six hundred people. They're not all in this film, obviously. Um, do you trust a politician? Not one of them said yes. Yeah. Not one of them. And then we, we never see we never see a sort of um, a survey which produces a result like that on TV, do we? No, we absolutely. And it is yeah. so simple to do. Yeah, we, we can do it, Ryan. You know yeah. what I mean? Why can't the BBC? But the DB, BBC are, are completely in disrepute right. at the moment, and uh, have just become the government. Whatever government's in power, their propaganda machine. Okay, then the, the, the next two films uh, we have. Um, Palmer's um, Boxing Academy. Right, that's second to last there on the screen. We're sorry yeah. we haven't got a pointer, but yeah. this isn't the BBC. Yeah, second no, to last. Right. Yeah. And then, um, so th that was about a, a, a local uh, a boxing academy that I wanted to promote because, you know, I, I want to get the sport back, it, back to the kids. We've been talking about this for years, not yeah. just because the Olympic Games are here. And then the final film, The Kids Punch Back, which is a film about the kids, victims that are fighting back. So these aren't all the films, you know. When you go on the on homepage, you can go into, um, you know, our news reports as well, which I believe we've got about 50 news reports up as well, which go from sort of 10 minutes, anything up to, to 20 minutes. So we have yeah. really attacked, uh, attacked this, you know. Yeah. And now with the Jimmy Savile thing coming out, you know, which we've mm. been talking about for, for many, many years, and, um, you know, could, could I just say to... Just before you do that. Yeah. Um, for people who've just seen that that uh, web page there for Poem Mash Films, I'm going to say that, that Bill and his team are desperate for money to help their filming. And if you go and you watch some of these films and you see the quality of the films, obviously everything connected with it requires money to be able to do it from travel, accommodation, uh, bring in some external expertise. And if we are to um, keep the alternative media of which Poem Mash Films, very specialist area here, looking at this terribly important subject of what's happening with the children. We need to support it. So I'm going to say, please visit the website. And if you feel able to, please could you make a donation through to or, Bill for his work? Or, or, or um, what I'd just like to add to that, Brian, is yeah. all these films are up for free. Yeah. So we, we have made no money from these films. Okay. Minuscule. But the point... But the point, yeah, the point is, yeah. you, they, you know, the public, you can watch these for free, um, but you can also buy DVDs or you can make donations that will help us to continue with our work. Well, because, uh, you know, we, I think we don't sell many DVDs because they're all up. But if you want to watch the film without buffing on, on, on the computer, etc., and, and, you know, a better quality, yeah. that, that would help us because we don't get any money at all. Yeah. Well, what, what I'll add to that is, is the fact that it's been Bill's work and actually meeting him um, at some rallies. I can't even remember how long ago it was I first met you, but, mm. but basically for us coming into contact with Bill Maloney and his team has meant that basically we've started to really understand what this abuse thing is about. Yeah. I haven't enjoyed being told much of the material Bill's given me. Uh, as I say, it's unbelievably harrowing. It's very dark. A lot of people simply want to shut their minds to it. It's too difficult. I don't want to go there. But it's real. Uh, we're going to be talking um, a little bit later about sort of the numbers of children. We're also going to be talking about 
money surrounded with this if we are to get the lid off what is actually happening in Britain today then we need people like Bill to be getting in with more investigative documentaries so I'm allowed to say Bill you're the guest or I'm allowed to say uh, UK Column Live is going to say please if you know somebody who's got a social conscience and they can actually do something generous to help what Bill's doing uh, please do, because we need to act, don't we? Ch well, yeah, children yeah. are the future. Yeah, the, 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 the children are the future, the, you know, like we say, the, the future keepers of the, uh, of the planet. Um, I believe that, you know, like I say, there's a third of people, 30% uh, of people in this country Damaged. have been abused. You're mm -hmm. never going to get a stable society like that. Those people that are damaged, uh, the majority of them, they come from the lower classes. They are the ones that suffer. They are the ones that are suffering with the austerity measures. As soon as the austerity measures start hitting Middle England, then they start doing something about it. Yeah. Now, one thing I'm certain of is we need Middle England. We need Middle England at their strongest, at their best, and at their most empathetic to help children. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, a, a lot of them, we know from, from the reports that we've done in the UK column, and we've been looking at the issue of children being taken by social services. Um, my first case, I think, goes back about seven or eight, eight years. That yeah. was to do with South Wales. Mm. But at that time, you could see that the children that were being taken were also at the bottom end of the spectrum, whatever you yeah, want to say. Yeah, 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 now yeah, yeah. what is clearly happening is that children are being taken not, not only from middle class families, they're being taken mm. from wealthy professional yeah. uh, people, including barristers actually, some of them. Mm. And so whatever this um, regime is that's operating in the country, and we're going to be analysing it a bit mm. as, as we carry on. psychiatrists, yes. police officers, yeah. um, secret services, you, you know, um, paedophiles aren't of a certain sort of, just all the same, from the same cultures, the same backgrounds. You know, paedophilia, um, about, I think it was about 10 years ago, they said they may have found the, the, the paedophilic gene. But we haven't heard anything since then. Yeah. Now, if, if paedophilia is caused by a gene, yeah. then you may feel for them a little bit. Bill, do, do you think that um, pornography on the internet is making a difference to the, the number of people who are abusing children sexually? Absolutely, absolutely. Not, just, you know, not just children, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's like teenager, uh, teenagers. The, I, I came um, uh, across um, a, a person who, she said to me that up by Crystal Palace, I can't say exactly where it is, but it's in South East London, there's a, there's a comprehensive school and it's mainly black, mainly black kids. And they have started having anal sex so that the girls can't get pregnant. Nice. But they, uh, you know, the human papilloma virus, which is responsible for 99.9% .9 of all cancers of, of, of the cervix, now they've discovered, who, who they've just recently, over the last two years, started giving the vaccination. Um, now they've discovered that it is also, um, because we carry it as a man, yeah. so it can be, it causes cancer of the throat, cancer of the anus, anywhere we go, if right. that, make, if and, that makes sense. And yet sense. We, we know, um, because it's, it's absolutely blatant, that the, the sex education going on in schools at the moment is actually softening uh, views and values. So we're promoting this activity absolutely. amongst children. Absolutely, absolutely. It's the images that are being passed from children from phone to phone to phone to phone, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, and, and, you know, it, it, it's, there, there is a real problem, a real serious problem, um, but I would like to, I would like to stick with uh, the institutions, you know, yeah. and Jimmy Savile. And I, uh, can, can we just call Jimmy up on screen if we give him uh, the honour of calling him that? Um, well, this man is now just appearing everywhere. But of course, you you have been saying for years that uh, yeah. this man is not. Uh, this man has been an abuser. Yeah. Well, he has been an abuser, and I believe that uh, Jimmy Savile has been complicit complicit in the murder and the torture and the making of snuff movies of children. He's at Haute de la Garenne, for God's sake. Jimmy yeah. Savile was at Haute de la Garenne. He had associations with the craze. Him and the craze, this is Jimmy Savile as well, that was procuring children to then pass on to Ted Heath.
Yeah. Edward Heath. Well, some, some people are going to be utterly shocked that we've, we've now got mention of a politician, but if you, if, if, you talk, if you talk to people who know, like mm. yourself and other people... It's just common are, knowledge to me. It's common knowledge to many yeah. people. Yeah. yeah. So, but um, uh, Jimmy Savile, um, he was a regular visitor to Hope de la Garenne. And what the, um, the, the national media seems to be trying to do is to sanitise this, to water it down by putting uh, people up like Freddie Starr. Cliff Richard. It is not just those people. Um, you know, we have to start looking at people like Prince Andrew. Prince Andrew, one of his best friends, his name is um, Jeffrey Epstein. Now, Jeffrey Epstein is um, a, a billionaire financial dealer. Now, he's got a financial company, but if you want to, if you want to um, invest in his company, you have to have a billion. Someone went to him with 750 million and he told him to go away. Not enough. Not enough. It's got to be a billion. Right. Now, Jeffrey Epstein was put in prison for child abuse, images, etc. Yeah. Two weeks after he came out of prison, he was walking through Central Park in New York with Prince Andrew. Yeah. How, practically uh, uh, holding hands. Well, this, this is an incredible thing, isn't it? Because it was reported widely in the press at the time. Uh, pictures appeared. But... It was almost as though those pictures appeared because let's sort of get this out in the open and what's oh, Prince Andrew um, with yeah it. and what's the yeah. problem isn't it? Well, there was ne there was never any follow up questions no. on it. Well, the thing is, Prince Andrew and um, Jeffrey Epstein were very close friends, and um, Jeffrey Epstein was unbelievably allowed to land his own private aircraft in our in, in our military airfields unheard of, mm. and he would often have children with him, and then he would go to see Prince Andrew etc etc so um, you know we've got this this link with Jeffrey Epstein and Prince Andrew now Prince Andrew and Jimmy Savile they were friends well th this because Jimmy Savile moved up to Glencore right this man seems to have been friends with everybody yeah. Mar Margaret Thatcher how, how do you well, explain the well, fact I, that I, he... you know I, I've came across information that Jimmy Savile spent 10 consecutive Christmases with Margaret Thatcher also, the, very, the, the, the crazy thing, the, the craziest thing that I've heard about Jimmy Savile is um, the Israeli Prime Minister Begin. He was called uh, uh, Prime Minister Begin um, at the time of the Six Day War. So Israel um, had, had the Six Day War, and then Jimmy Savile was friends with Begin. Now, Jimmy Savile said something to Begin, and Begin said to him, I want you to come over here, Jimmy, I want you to come to Israel, I want you to come into a cabinet meeting with me, and I want you to tell the cabinet what you just told me. Anyway, Jimmy goes over there, goes into the cabinet meeting, Begin says, this is Jimmy Savile, Jimmy, tell him what you told me. Jimmy said, you won the war, you won the land, you gave back the land. You won the only oil well in the country. You gave it back. You don't know what it is to be Jewish anymore. That is what he said. Then he was, after that, regularly going out to cabinet meetings with the Israeli Prime Minister, and he was given a medal for services rendered. Jimmy Savile, this is the most important thing, actually, because Jimmy Savile, he was a disc jockey. Now, Jimmy Savile had a say in what was happening in Palestine and the Middle East. That is absolutely crazy. Now, if you also look at the brutality of the war in Iraq, for 14 years before that war started, we put sanctions against Iraq, and two million children died. Two million children died because of all of us. Yeah. We allowed it, Brian. Right. And that's so what we need to say to people. We are feel guilty. Feel ashamed. Feel like you haven't done anything because we haven't done anything. You know, if a kid's got a black face, is it easier to kill a kid with a black face than it is so to kill a kid with a white face? Right. So your point, Sorry. no, it's okay. Your yeah. point over this man is that that he's the center of something much, much massive, bigger. Massive, massive. Now, I've also found out that Jimmy Savile was a necrophiliac. Right. Now, for those of you that don't know, and Nick, where is the camera? Is it straight in front of me? Yeah. Straight in front okay. of me. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, you, something you may not realise is that necrophilia, that is having sex with dead bodies. And um, Jimmy Savile would often go to, um, to, to morticians and offer them money 
um, it, to, to give him the keys for the morgue so that he could go in and do what he wanted to these yeah. dead bodies. Now, Jimmy Savile lived in a penthouse suite in uh, it, just on the edge of a park called Hay Round, Round Hay, sorry, Round Hay Park, one of the biggest parks in Europe, and this is in Leeds. Now, Peter Sutcliffe, the Yorkshire Ripper, he killed a woman in that park. Right. He tried to kill another woman, a black woman, but she escaped. Now, we then discovered that Peter Sutcliffe was a necrophiliac himself. He wound up in Broadmoor under Jimmy Savile's wing with Ronnie Cray. But as far as... Um, uh, 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 also another strange story was that Peter Sutcliffe said he was murdering, attacking someone at one, one night and he heard voices and Jimmy Savile was one of those voices. Yeah. Now, Peter Sutcliffe, he was an equiphiliac, he worked as a, mor uh, 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 a mortuary assistant for quite a while. What is that connection now? Mm. That is what I'm interested in. When when, when you say we, Bill, I, I know you're working with a team of people. Yeah. Um, you say as much as you want to say or, or not. Yeah. But the, the team that you're working with now includes police or ex-police who are interested in this. Well, um, no, I, I, don't, I, I don't work with any ex-police officers. Right. I work with serving police officers. Right. Uh, and, you know, because there's so, so many police officers, they feel like they're being tainted with this brush... Right. of allowing paedophilia. Now this, this, is, this is an extremely interesting point because um, uh, about a year ago I was in a, a location, it, it was I would say connected with government, I can't, I can't give that location at the moment, but the people there included police who were talking about their experiences with uh, having investigated child abuse and one individual spoke about doing a survey, this is going back a few years, within all of the police districts to see whether there was any substance to the rumours about how many children were actually being abused and trafficked. So we're talking about thousands of children instead of one or two. Well, just, yeah. just Sorry, if I may, just uh, fin yeah. finish this. Um, and what actually transpired out of that is that the, the police officer, now retired, uh, was asked by a senior member in the audience, uh, well, what happened to your report? You did this uh, work with another colleague. Uh, you're telling us that you confirmed that uh, what was going on was massive, that it was interlinked across the country. Uh, the abuse was connected with thousands of children. What happened to your report? And the person looked at the audience and said, it went into my boss's safe that's a senior police officer, mm -hmm. and it never saw the light of day. Yeah. Right? Now, that comment by police, I have also heard, and we've, we have some mutual uh, connections here, yeah. we've also heard other police officers saying that they have spent thousands of hours investigating uh, very large child abuse rings. They have found connections up to the highest levels of society and government. They've put together the plan to break it apart. They've put together all the evidence to bring it to trial. And then when they've submitted their report, everything goes quiet. And a couple of months later, they're told, drop it. Wind your neck in. That's and you, what they you've, say. you have heard absolutely the same thing. Absolutely. I've, yeah. I've heard the same thing. You know, it's, it, the, the police have not got a free reign on this. The politicians are involved in this heavily. Esther Ranson is guilty of what's called vicarious liability. Now, vicarious liability, it means that supposing you and I are officers working in a young offenders institution, okay? Right. You're beating children regularly. I am not, but I know you're doing it. And right. I don't disclose I'm guilty of vicarious liability. Right. Esther Ranson, I wouldn't trust Esther Ranson as far as I could carry you. Right. Uh, you know what I mean? Which is probably quite a long way. Actually. It might be. I'll say, I'll maybe I should have <laughs> used a different... different <laughs> you need somebody a bit chunkier. <laughs> as, far, yeah. as far as I could spit. But, um, right. you know, um, so that, that is Esther Ranson. And, and there was a little fact a, a, a while ago. I think it was about two years ago. There's a guy called um, Chris Whitwa. Um, a plucky little fella. Right. Um, I think he was an ex-Marine. 
And he used to, uh, he, I think he's still got it up, he's got a, um, a, a sex offenders register up of his own, because yeah. we won't put one up, and the police have, won't take it down, so he's got it. But, you know, it, Chris, he, very feisty, and um, he spent a short time in prison. But he was voted by the um, community channel, who um, Esther Ranson is a, a senior patron of. Right. So in the, on the, the community, it was called a community champion. They were looking for the community champion. Chris Whitwa was on that list. Robert Green, who's in charge of the Holly Gregg case. Campaigner he, for Holly Gregg, yeah. For, a campaigner for Holly Gregg, Robert Green, he was on that list. Mm. I was on that list, and then you was on that list. Now, the three of us that were at the top, because I think you was, you was doing well, Brian, you know what I mean? But well, I think you've, I, you've told me this, and, and yeah. for, for viewers and yeah. listeners today, uh, you may not believe what, what uh, Bill is saying at the moment, but I had no idea where this process went. I yeah. knew about the list, but I didn't know where it went. And you, so you did told you know me, you was on it? I knew I was on it, yeah, you was but on I didn't do anything but further. You, at the time, you weren't prolific as um, a child abuse expert, if you like. Right. Well, I don't claim so to be still. No, but you, you know, is, you're, getting, yeah. you're getting pretty close. Um, and then we had, um, so we had Chris Whitwa, right, right? Um, done some pucker, pucker work, really good work. Then we had Robert Green, and we know Robert Green, for, for what he believes in, has, has been to prison for it. And then there was myself. We were all taken down. We were running free. We had more votes individually than all the others put together. Right, and when, when was this then? I think this was about three years ago, actually. Right. Um, and then uh, our producer at Pie Mesh Films, she got in touch with Esther Ranson, who was a nasty, I can only call her a bitch, really. Yeah, because it's UK Column Live and we've got an agreement. <laughs> yeah, I know, no expletives. But okay. his, his bitch, yeah. all right. is, that, is, is that okay? Okay. <laughs> um, so we were all taken down and their phone lines, uh, where, where Esther Ranson was working, they were blocked. They mm. were just, for three days, she kept getting it, she kept getting it, she would not talk to anyone. Right. She took down the three of us, and we were all very prolific as activists yeah. against child abuse. We heard nothing. Now, this is coming out, and her crocodile tears... Well, she, she said, correct, correct me if I've got it wrong, but Esther Ranson uh, said something in the press, like, they wouldn't let us speak out. Or well, who are they? Like, well... That's an interesting question. Uh, I mean, question, you know, you, could, you can't get a better um, platform than what Esther Ranson's got. You yeah. just can't. Now, you know, you do have what we call gatekeepers. Now, gatekeepers are people that you think are fighting against child abuse, but they are not. Mm. They are not. And uh, ignoring things is one of the worst things you can do. Yeah. Well, certainly, I know from a case that, that I was personally involved with, um, an individual went to help. Uh, went for help to Childline, mm. and that ended up with with personal communication with Esther Ranson. Yeah. Um, it was all going fine, uh, very polite, helpful, encouraging emails coming, mm. and then at the point that the pressure was really starting to come on the parent, um, it was like somebody flicked mm. a switch. Mm. No further communication from Esther Ranson at all. Yeah, and. That was coupled with, um, part of the incident was connected with Gibraltar. Mm -hmm. um, the child line base in Gibraltar, an individual there was also very helpful to the mother. Mm. Um, did a lot, in fact, for the mother at one point, very t difficult time. But then the next minute... That mm. person, I understand, has left Gibraltar. Yeah. So, well, so you know, you're, you're talking about going abroad as well, you know. It's, it's like, um, it, it, I saw some crazy figures about Cambodia. Now, tourists go out there for sex. And in the figures, it says 80% of the children, the street children in Cambodia, had been approached for sex by tourists. Yeah, because there's millions of tourists. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know they're saying, why is this um, prolific in the third world? I think that's obvious, isn't it? It is obvious. They don't have the infrastructure to deal with it. We have the in infrastructure to deal with it. But a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to some police officers at Peckham, Peckham Police Station, and um, they said to me, "What would you do about this, Bill?" I said, "Well, you've got to hit it very strong, because we're talking about, you know." from all the forces, all the armed forces, hmm. 
paedophile rings. We're talking about our government's paedophile rings. Yeah. Everywhere you look, paedophile rings, paedophile rings. So what I believe should happen is an amnesty should be offered and um, to all paedophiles that come forward and expose the rings that they have been working with. Right. This will cause mayhem for the paedophiles. It will cause mayhem. So, because what you've got to imagine, you've got to imagine, you've got, say you've got 100 people in a paedophile ring, okay? And this comes out. If you disclose, you're going to get amnesty. You can walk away. Yeah, you still have to be sort of monitored and so that. Some, so you can walk away. Somebody who's been drawn into this, they've done something. They they've actually yeah. still got a well, conscience. Exactly, and, and they've and, got and a conscience. They, they there are paedophiles that do commit suicide. Yeah, they when they get older, they commit suicide. So it is not a safe thing to be doing anyway. If you yeah. if you want to look at it like that, but the, if we if we offer an amnesty to paedophiles, suppose you like I say, you got a a, a, a paedophilic ring that is an um, institution, some kind of institution, and there's a hundred in it, two hundred yeah. or three hundred. Yeah. Everyone's going to be watching. Yeah. They're going to say, who is the one that is going to come forward and disclose? Because that person is going to walk away. If, and someone is going to do it. You bet your life yeah. someone's yeah. going to do it. So that would cause mayhem. That is like a terror tactics used against paedophiles. Do, do you and I think that must happen, and I think that all of you, if you can get your members of parliament and get someone, let's get someone strong that can push this through. Offer paedophiles amnesty for exposing all the other paedophiles, but I think um, the amount that there are will be horrific. Right. Um, but come Senator Savray from Jersey, yeah. now, w w wherever we think he stands, at the moment I'm just going to say, we ju I just want his quote, I don't want to, I won't, don't want to discuss too much on that. But yeah. The quote that Senator Severing made is, is, is along the lines that governments love paedophilia because paedophilia is the means by which people can be totally controlled. Mm. And this is, this is a very, to me, this is a very astute statement that um, if, if I go back into, I uh, don't like doing this, go back to the very, very early 70s when I joined the military, um, you you are vetted to see whether you're reliable and what, what is checked, depending on what, what your future job is going to be and your security clearances. Um, are you a, do you drink? Are you an alcoholic? Have you got any drug habits? Are you a womanizer? Have you committed adultery? Mm. Uh, dirty little secrets. Now, the, the intelligence services wanted that information um, principally because if you were harboring dirty little secrets, then you could be blackmailed. And mm. if you could be blackmailed, you were a security risk. That's what I but believe was happening at places like Hope de la Grande. Right. Well, what I, what I wanted to say for, for the audience this afternoon is that if you actually look at what is developed in our society at the moment, you can now get away with virtually everything. You can be a politician, you can take drugs, you can have mistresses, you can use prostitutes. All of this has happened. You can fiddle your expenses. Start um, wars. You can start wars. Tell lies to start yeah, right. wars. So all of these things are attributes which we see for British. We just stick with Britain. We're British politicians. Mm. But the one thing which is still not acceptable is the abuse of children. Never and, will be. Uh, right. But that, to me, seems to just make complete sense that if you want to completely own a politician or you want to own a, a senior policeman or even a military person, so they're going to do exactly what, what you want, about. Then, so, yeah. then you need people who are corrupted in, well, in this way. What I believe is, in places like Hope de la Grande, it happens, it's happened in a lot of other countries, so you'll get Hope de la Grande. And you'd say, so, uh, so you've got some, your eye on someone in the Secret Service, right, who's been a little bit tricky, causing grief or anything yeah. like that. What you do, you, give, you get them a hope to the grin, and you let them have a kid. But you film it. When that person gets home, you send them the film. They will do anything you want them to. They will do anything you say. Yeah. We have to look higher than the entertainment industry. The entertainment industry has opened this up via the monster, the, uh, the child abuser, the child killer, the necrophiliac, Jimmy Savile. 
and um, I'm a, that that is true. I'm not making this up. No, okay. You know, so because I've been I've been talking about stuff like this for many years now, and now it's starting to come out. But the BBC at this moment are trying to sanitise this because there were very major people in the BBC. The BBC is the government's propaganda machine. That is theirs. They own it, well, and we. Can, just one minute, bro. Yeah. Um, we give them three point four five billion pounds every year. Yeah. And I found out the other day that if you're blind, instead of giving the BBC, I think it's one hundred and forty-five pound, whatever, one hundred and forty-seven pound, you only have to give them seventy-two pound. The BBC are taking license fees, Brian, off of the blind. Yeah. So. What they're doing, they're cutting off, they're saying, you can't watch the, vid the, 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 the visuals, yeah. but you're still listening right. to our audio. Well, well, Where is the compassion in the BBC well, for that? I, I don't think there's any compassion, because I agree with Pensioners. you. Pensioners. I, I agree with what you've just said, that the BBC is is absolute propaganda machine that is control. I believe Absolutely. at the moment, I think I'm right on this, that the BBC is, is, uh, is about to unleash an investigation into how unbiased it is. Oh, really? Okay, <laughs> who's going to do the investigation? Well, they are. Well, the BBC is going to do it. Oh, there you so, go. But all of the and who's paying their wages? Well, and who's we, paying we for will. the investigation? We, we are. Right. And they say that they just don't advertise. They right. keep them like more right. independent have, or whatever. They should advertise. Have you ever had an approach from the BBC to sort of do a documentary or research into what you're talking about? Yeah, well, you know, when I, when I was in the in the dramatic film business, I suppose you could call it. You know, when um, I was asked to become involved in the football factory and many other brick flicks. Um, the BBC, uh, you know, I've done a few interviews with the, with the right. BBC, you know, but then I stopped doing interviews for the BBC because of the editing process. You see what we're doing now, you know, the, there's yeah. no editing in this, Brian. No, this it's going like, out we're, live. We're sitting there, yeah. it's going out live. Yeah, but even when, when things go out live, they can still edit it. You'd be yeah. surprised what they can yeah. do. You can change a story completely through editing, you know. It's like the, the BBC, with me, they were doing sort of um, hour interviews, hour and a half interviews, and then they were looking at the style, the way I was shooting films, the grittiness of it, and then they tried to start getting there. I could see their reporters yeah. almost wanting to swear, like I do, you know what I mean, yeah. in, in, in the films. Yeah. Um, it, it, which was a bit crazy, or becoming more using the hands, more gestures, etc., yeah. to and, and become trying to become involved in the subject that they're talking about. Now, if you're a reporter, which I am, I hold a, a press yeah. pass. Now, if you if you're uh, a reporting on a film, you should still you, you, you remain unbiased, but sometimes you just have to show your emotions. Yeah. And you never see these reporters doing it on Sky, or uh, they're all dressed the same. I saw a guy. He was, he, he was in the country, um, yeah. right out in the sticks, and he was reporting yeah. on the floods. Yeah. And he, he's in this rural area. He's got a so suit on, he's yeah, got well, a tie I'm, on. I'm doing it now. Because yeah, but you, we're not flooded you, yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, were, we were earlier on. Yeah, we were getting get <laughs> flooded by the audience. <laughs> we have to talk about that. Yeah. But, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. But people who are in this doing very serious work, ev even when you're dealing in documentation about... I'll stick to the area that, that I've done most in, yeah. which is the children being taken away by child services. Even when the documentation exists, the BBC does not want to get involved, uh, or, and the, other, the rest of the mainstream media. Yeah. Booker from The Telegraph, uh, Christopher Booker, who's done some pretty uh, crunchy articles on what's been happening in family courts, but he's quite happy to, to say that the key problem is the moment you start to get to the nitty gritty of what's going on, the legal teams start to warn off the editorial board. Well, that, look, look, I'll tell you what, that takes us nicely into Jack Straw. You see Jack Straw, mm. it was about, I think it was about four years ago when I, I, I was still in the process of making Adam Rickwood and the Medamsley Heroes. But about four years ago, he made it so that any child that is abused in care, it was illegal for that child to put that story into right. the public dem well, domain. Of course, we. That was Jack Straw. Can I just finish this? Go on, yeah. And while Jack Straw was given the job of overhauling the sex offenders register, his own brother William was on it for two counts. Yeah. Well, we did a little bit of work on this before the show, so I'm just going to call up a, um, a slide here for uh, uh, the man himself. Um, so this, this was an article from the Guardian, the Guardian which we reported the other day. Um, 
where he's been accused of misleading MPs over torture of Libyan dissidents. Yeah. And the reason I thought I'd bring it up into this discussion is because this is a different subject um, in relation to Mr. Straw, but of course what it's saying is he's not telling the truth. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's very clear. But he can't. It's very well, difficult to tra tell the truth, Brian, when you don't know how to tell the truth. Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, we've, we've got here that former Foreign Secretary named in legal documents concerning Gaddafi opponents held on MI6 tip-offs. And this yeah. were people who were basically tortured. And, and the headline from The Guardian, well, misleading is the same as fiddling, isn't it? Well, fid I, yeah, fiddle exactly. expenses, that's Fiddling, stealing to yeah. most people. Well, I, I Misleading to most people is lying, yeah. but they, they're not going to print that. But, you know, this, this is the man. He, he tries to come across as, as squeaky clean, but of course, if we get into his history, there was some pretty dodgy stuff when he was a young student. He's yeah. got extreme political views, but we're going to focus on mm. what, what you've mentioned there, which is... Um, this is a, a change in legislation. I'll read it just f for the people listening as opposed to viewing. But as of April 2009, because of a change in leg legislation being introduced by Jack Straw, the Justice Secretary, the media will no longer be able to identify those involved in cases such as the Webster's. Now, the Webster case is a child uh, yeah. court case, family court case. And then this, this absolutely blatant statement, so it continues, it will also be illegal for any children currently in care to speak out even if they feel they're being mistreated. I know, it sends a shiver right. up your spine. Well, what, That's Jack Straw, people. What human being would Tony want to Blair's make it... Friend. What, what <laughs> human being would want to make it more difficult for young people to speak out if they're being surely the so legislation just, should be yeah. to make it easier for it's, them to speak out isn't it what, what, what this man done is abnormal to to decent human beings yeah he, he should never have been allowed also he, i think his son was caught dealing drugs as well and what his brother william was on um the, the sex offenders register for um you know assaulting one was a violent attack on two girls his brother william right now this man should never have been given a job because he had a vested interest. Or was he given the job because of the man he is? This is he the question which I'm becoming yeah, interested this in. This is what it is. The, he's been pushed up front. You see, the, the paedophiles, the, the, especially the, are within the institutions, there's a lot of Masonic goings on, you know? You know, the cults we were talking about, you know, like Freemasonry and oaths that they take. Secrecy is what Secrecy, you're getting at. Secrecy, yeah. And, and the, 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 the sexuality, Sorry, to, the, yeah, yeah. the tables are rocking, yeah. um, the, the sexuality of, of children. It's like, I, I, I still, I often think of like, all the, all the men and women in prisons, yeah. the sexuality, what do they yeah. do? Right, so you've got to talk about masturbation. Then, if you look in all the armed forces, the men and women that are in the armed forces, no sex, masturbation again. Sex, sexual desire, is a very, very powerful human phenomenon. Yeah. And, and, people and what being... do they do? So, sorry, Brian. So then, if we look at the Catholic Church and the celibacy with the nuns and the priests, yeah. you know, I say it quite a lot, actually. It was a nun that taught me how to fly. She grabbed me by the ear. I was only four. And she said, come on, I'm going to teach you how to fly. Took me in a room, sort of throwing me around the room. For four, for three years, in, I was in Mill Hill, in, um, North London, in a place called um, St. Vincent's, and it was an orphanage. I was beaten on my bare backside every single night by the same nun with the hard side of a hairbrush, and all the other nuns were at it. And a novice young actually tried to abuse me when she was lifting me out of the bath as well. But someone, okay. someone right, came look, in. I, I want to just stay on Mr. Straw at the moment. We've, yeah, we've actually got two... Clips. The first one, um, so that's the second clip, Mike, please, if we can manage that one. This is just to get people's minds into the frame of the sort of environment that we're talking about for children. So it's the film clip of the youngsters being put into the cells, which is from your film. Yeah. So we just see that, and then we've got a, a little bit of audio of Mr. Straw talking about this business of uh, children being stopped from speaking out. So if we, if we can yeah. just play the first one, Mike, if you're happy with that. A lot of people saying something but you. You 
don't know where they've been And it ain't worth asking Oh, no, baby, oh, you're too young Too young Too young Too young to sing the blues Too young Too young Right, now that's, that's that clip when I first saw it. Yeah. Of course, what is instantly in your mind is what did those two heavyweights do when they went back to the cell yeah. where they put the first boy? Yeah. Now that, that is an it, that, that is still a regular occurrence. There are still young offenders in institutions that are being strip searched in front of all the other young offenders in the hallways. They are, they're still using, um, you know, really dangerous um, restraints against the kids, against the kids. That's what happened with um, Adam Rickwood, you know, when he was he was in Hassockfield. Yeah. Now, now they used on that that young lad. They used a thing called nose nose, nose distraction. distraction technique, NDT. That's what they call it. And if viewers do not know what NDT is, it's punching somebody on the nose. Effectively. Uh, well, more or less, it is designed for pain. Right. It is like. A push hard to the nose, a blow to the nose, um, and also the wrist locks as well. Right. You know, I think there was one institution we investigated, and there was something like thirty broken wrists uh, visits right. to hospital in, in, in one year. Yeah. You know, and but it just seems to, to to be okay for us that we can leave because these people are behind bars. We don't see them, and they're hidden. That we can. They, they're not in our minds. They're not in our minds. But you know, you have to go to the place when you, you know when I when I was in uh, when I was in care, and the rest of my family forced into care. And family alienation is practice. You know, like I've got brothers. That, so one of my brothers, he, he sounds like Prince Charles the way he talks. My brother James. You know what I mean? So we got like upper class accents, middle class accents, and lower class accents through my family. It is crazy to see yeah. us all sitting together. Those of us that have made it and are still alive. Yeah. You know. Um, What's next? <laughs> well, just you know, just on the subject. So this this lad uh, basically had a broken nose, a broken wrist, and a broken wrist, which tends to suggest that there was excessive force used in the nose distraction yeah. technique. Yeah, so, and yeah. his wrist, and then he could still manage to hang himself. Well, this, this is where we started it. He made he, the, his cell was covered in blood. He was made to clean up his own blood, Brian. Right. This kid. Then apparently on the curtain rail. He has put, tied a ligature out of his laces, he's cut his laces into eight different pieces, right? When, he was on suicide watch. When someone's on suicide watch, you don't put them in a cell with their laces. You take their laces, you take their belt, anything that they can self-harm with. That is what suicide watch is. Mm. So apparently, somehow, he's got his lace that he's cut into eight pieces. He's tied a ligature around his neck. He's got a piece of sticky tape you know, um, yeah. surgical sticky tape from somewhere, wrapped it around the end of the rail, first putting the ligature... With a broken wrist. With the broken wrist and the yeah. nose, put this over the rail, and then hung himself. Now, you know, it's like, what, what you've got to understand is, when, in, in, in the old days, when we, you know, we used to have hanging in this country, it wasn't to choke, to garrot, it was to break the neck. It was a very quick death, and then, you, you know, you make a mess, you, you, you know. Yeah. You, you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Adam Rickwood choked to death. He never broke his neck. How long was he there for Adam Rickwood? And I, I met this when I made Adam Rickwood and the Medemsley Heroes. I met this 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 child's family, and it's like you know, I, I've just got so many puncher marks in my head from when I, I go and meet these people and become very close right, and, and I would say to if, if you watch um, you watch Adam Bill's, Rickwood, yeah. yeah you watch Bill's film and and you can see detailed and very close up interviews with the family members including his mother mm. who is expressing her utter disbelief mm. that Harold. that the thing can go through an inquest where well, she, was still in, she was still in shock, Brian. I mean, yeah. that, that was when we made the film, it was four years yeah. after, and she was waiting for the second inquest to come along. But this place that he was killed in, Has Hasekfield, the reason the film is called Adam Rickwood and the Medemsley Heroes is mm. Adam Rickwood brought it up to date, right? Yeah. Saying that we're still doing it because the place was originally called Medemsley. Yeah. Now, the prolific 
paedophile Neville Husband was operating there. Right? Now, Neville Husband, he was... Uh, he was, ha he was having sex with the kids, he was buggering them, he was doing all and he was in charge of the kitchens. But Neville Husband, and he was also having pornography, child pornography, sent in to the prison. Now, when he was working as a, a, a guard in the Young Offenders Institution, which was then called Medemsley, that's why the Medemsley heroes right. are guys that are up to about 47, 50 years of age. Right. They took the home office to court, they won, they, two, three million pounds was allocated to them, they got half a million pound, while the legal profession, i.e. their solicitors and barristers, they picked up two and a half million pounds. Yeah. Outrageous. So, um, they, and, and given these, some of these guys, they weren't given life-changing amounts of money, which what they should have been given. They were given like 40, 50,000 pound top whack. You might as well give them a gun yeah. because most of them are self-medicating they've got problems yeah. with alcohol well, drugs etc yeah but the, the point you're making is that more money went to the legal teams than to that, than that's to a the strong point themselves that's a strong and, point on that well, one, yeah. we have a, another person um who who has um, exposed this abuse in in a very um black and white way is teresa cooper Teresa uh, Cooper, uh, book pin down yeah. so if if you want to re uh, read about abuse, yeah. which has been covered up by the church. Um, Teresa Cooper's book, Pinned Down, yeah. uh, is I think, just I think Teresa was really, um, I, I haven't read the book, but what I've heard about it is that she's really focusing on the use of drugs against children. Absolutely. It's like some, some of our children that are, are hyperactive now, we're giving them a drug called Ritalin. Yeah. Now, Ritalin, the police officers I talk to, they say, well, that is cocaine to us, Bill. It's almost exactly the same makeup as cocaine. Now, a kid who's, who's like, like this, yep. you know, you don't want to give him cocaine, do yeah. you? Well, some, some, of, some of the girls in the unit she were in were, were drugged unconscious for days at a time. Yeah. Um, but um, could, I, could, I, could I just go, I know there's more, something else that I need to say about I, Medemsley, you know? Yeah. Um, so uh, this, um, this, this guy, he, the, 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 when the, some of these guys were being abused in Medemsley, okay, yeah. which was like up to, I suppose, the 80s, uh, early 80s, right. and then it went into Hasselfield, uh, um, a lot of these, these guys, ligatures were used on them. Mm. Now, one of them, called Kevin Young, um, Neville Husband had him in his house, in Neville Husband's house, took him out of the, out of the, in, of the institution and brought him to his own house. And he knew that the, the, the governor at the time, his name was James Miller Reed. Now, James Miller Reed, he was buggering Kevin Young while Neville Husband was turning the ligature and he was going in and out of consciousness. And he knew it was James Miller Reed because he was the only person down the bottom of the blindfold he could see his brown brogues. He was the only one who had brown, brown brogues, brogues in the institution, Brian. Mm. So, um,. Then, but the strange thing was, when the investigation started, James Miller Reed was found dead in an orchard near Canterbury in Kent. Right. There's a lot of people dying. Jimmy Savile. When Jimmy Savile made that documentary with Louis Ferro, and all the people in Jimmy Savile's paedophilic ring, including royals, they were terrified. What are you doing, Jimmy? What on earth are you? Why did he make the doc? He didn't have to make the documentary, mm. but he made the documentary, and I don't believe that Jimmy Savile died of natural causes. I don't think James Miller Reed died of natural causes. I don't think that David Kelly died of natural causes. No. So there, you know, and, and and it's not just these people. There's lots of people that I find that have been getting ready to blow a whistle, and mysteriously they die. die yeah. I think there's one guy with uh, Kevin Annett, you know, the, one who, the guy who's Well, fighting. we're going to show a little bit on yeah. Kevin I've just got an eye on the time here, because we've, yeah. we've got 19 minutes to go. Wow. We've just come back, if I ask Mike just to put um, Mr. Straw back up on the screen, um, because I'm just going to read that little last bit of that quote again. So Mr. Straw, uh, um, he made it illegal for any children currently in care to speak out, even if they feel they're being maltreated. So against the background of what you're telling us, Bill, harrowing information about what's happening for children, this man is saying... Sorry, where was that go. quote from? Um, actually, it was from uh, a newspaper, The Independent, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but they wrote an article in which 
Uh, yeah, they were quite outspoken in well, saying that, this is that's, incredible. That's, right, like, it's like you say, that's what Jack Straw says. It would also would be it, illegal for any children currently in care to speak right. out, even if they feel they'll be in right. treatment. Now, you, you have got uh, audio of Mr. Straw being asked about this, haven't yeah. you? I think, I think the, the film footage speaks for itself, Brian. Well, <clears> if Mike can manage um, its movie Clip 3, I think. Yesterday, I was in the cab. I picked up a film. Was it the proper one? A proper cab. Yeah, I picked up. I was in my cab working, and uh, I, uh, I had a guy in the cab, and uh, he's a, a very independent. Bill Maloney's name. He, he makes little independent films okay. and yeah. stuff. And and I didn't realise he's working on one now about child abuse. And and I didn't realise he said to me to say to you, right. why in 2009 you made it illegal or for any children in care to speak out about being, you know, ill-treated. Did you do that, Jack? No. He said that that was something to do with you, and I said, I've got you. He said, oh, Jack Straw, yeah, yeah, he, he, he made it uh, well, illegal. I mean, I've got this. Children in care to speak out. I said, well, I'll ask him that tomorrow. Um, I mean, I, you, one it gets involved in so much that occasionally you have memory lapse, but I think I remember that. I, I, I don't remember, I mean, it's not, not I mean, I'm not telling it's not my own responsibility. I mean, actually, one of the, I don't know where it's coming from, because one of the things I've been doing um, is to try and open up the family courts where a lot of these issues get argued about, and I, so that people, you know, they, the, the press would not be able to report the names of the kids, or their, therefore their yeah. parents, but they would be able to say, well, you know, this, this is a really odd decision. Um, and it's, I've had, frankly, a very big fight with the, uh, some of the people in the family courts and the uh, children's organisations who want family justice, so-called, to remain a secret garden. So okay. I can say to him, um, that I don't know what he's talking about, but okay. if you... If Well, that, uh, that, um, I think what we missed at the beginning of the clip was the explanation. Um, what, what the audience don't realise is that that guy, the black cab driver, who, got Jack, who Jack Straw blatantly lied to, was a friend of mine. And um, he was given the job because he does acting as well. And I trained him as an actor, the guy, the cab driver. And uh, one day the son went to him because they was looking for someone who could pick up, I think it was the last election, um, uh, they could pick up politicians and they'd talk in the cab and then the sun would put it up on their site, on, uh, you yeah. know what I mean, and, and people could see, could see it. So Jack Straw blatantly lied there, so, so that, that is what happened and uh, you know, he didn't expect, um, expect that, but you can see how easily the man lies. He's an outrageous liar and I think right. that Jack Straw so, should be behind bars. Well, okay, so we're, we're saying to the audience today, just think about we're not providing the absolute answer to this thing, but we're asking the question. Well, we haven't got time. <laughs> what, well, we can have another go, I hope. Yeah. We're going to say, what is this man trying to achieve by stopping children speaking out? Is the agenda from running secret family courts, and they are secret, there's no jury, there's no press. We've even got a mother who's had her two boys taken away from her who is now not allowed to even mention the names of her two boys. She can only show them by holding up her wrists because she's got the names of the two children on her wrists. So it seems if you apply common sense, which is a pretty reasonable thing to do, if you apply common sense, surely we must be saying that the only reason you would want to stop children speaking out if they claim or allege they're being abused is to cover up what's going on. Is to cover up right. the evidence and no. not to put the perpetrators, the institutional perpetrators, into the dock right. where they should be. Right. And they, they, these, these, these sentences, they've got the tariff has got to go up. But of course, we, we haven't got clean courts at the moment no, because we, we also know. I don't believe we've ever had a clean court. Absolutely, we, we've got. We've certainly got judges who have themselves been put in prison for being paedophiles or abuse yeah. or sexual. Not abuses. too many though. Not too many. But if we, if we have a look at another politician, um, and the lady concerned is Harriet Harman, um, here she is, she's of course looking very clean and smart and upper middle class, do you think? She's not quite upper class, I don't well, think. Well, I, I don't know, Brian, <laughs> I just think bitch. Well, well <laughs> here is the woman, and if we, if we dig back into her history, we find that when she was originally connected with the National Council for Civil, Lib Civil Liberties, which is the forerunner of Liberty, the organisation, 
she was lobbying for uh, the rules on pornographic photos of children to be relaxed. Mm -hmm. And if I show this in a bit more detail, here, here she is looking a little bit chubbier and, and younger, of course. And I'll, I'll just read what was going out. In NCCL's official response to the government's plans to reform sex laws, dubbed a Lolita, uh, Lolita's Charter, it suggested reducing the age of consent and argued that childhood sexual experiences willingly engaged in with an adult result in no identifiable damage. It claimed that children can suffer more from having to retell their experiences in the court or the press. And then in an official NCCL response, which was signed by the then Miss Harmon, um, that was a response to the Protection of Children Bill, it was claimed that the new law could lead to damaging and absurd prosecutions and increase censorship. She suggested that a pornographic photo or film of a child should not be considered indecent unless it could be shown that the subject had suffered and that uh, prosecutors would have to prove harm rather than defendants having to justify themselves. And at the time that this lady made this remarkable statement... Evil statement, Brian, I think. I believe, I totally I agree believe that is evil. Absolutely. And we've got, well, okay, the images come off there, but at that time, the National Council for Civil Liberties was directly linked into an organisation called PI, the Paedophile Information Exchange, and it was also linked into PAL, Paedophile Action for Liberty. So we, we just ask a question here. We've got, we've got one, they happen to be Labour MPs, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Mm. We've got one Labour MP who's quietly bringing in a law so it's stopping children who are abu being abused being, speaking out. A classic example with that going on at the moment is Oxford and Cherwell Valley College, where none of the Oxfordshire Safeguarding Board have actually dealt with evidence of, of abuse within the college. So one man is denying children the opportunity of speaking out. And then here we've got a, a lady who is actually pushing to make it easier to take pornographic pictures of children. Well, there you is, go. Uh, I mean, you know... Is, do they not think... We, like we, ordinary people? What, well, what do you think is going on? Well, what, what, what we have to do is, first of all, when you look at young offenders institutions, it is Her Majesty's young offenders institution. Right. Prisons, Her Majesty's prison, HMP. Now, Lancaster prison, for example, was built purely for to give money to the Crown. We've got Prince Andrew messing about with one of the most prolific child traffickers, richest anyway, i.e. Jeffrey Epstein. We have to start looking at these people. And probably. asking the questions. And asking the questions. Why is Prince William being groomed to be king? I mean, Prince William, I'll tell you what he has had, the Order of the Garter. Hmm. And his job, he went straight into the city and he was, he was I I interested in money. Yeah. That, that's what he was doing. We have Charles, we have Serious allegations against. I don't like calling them princes. I don't like prince. Well, princes. We're, we're just going to we're just going to yeah. play the game in this. Yeah, program. well, we're 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 playing the game in, in, in this one. You know the um the the knighting yep. of someone, Sir Jimmy Savile. I mean, why it, why why yeah. why kneeling? Well, I mean, this is a Christian society. Well, now, the Bible tells us you do not kneel or bow or to take, anyone. Or take an oath. Or, or take an oath. Yeah. And then when we get this knighthood, you know, the, right. you know, the, the, the Queen owns the island of Jersey. Right. So we, we, we don't own it, Brian. The right. UK doesn't own the island of Jersey. Okay. The Queen, the Crown, owns the island of Jersey. Let's get that straight. Right. And she has taken no responsibility. All she's got to say, this is outrageous. She said something about Hamaza. The guy, is it Hamza? The Hamza, guy? Hamza. Hamza, who, who was just sent to America. Yeah. She said, why is this evil man still here? Yeah? yeah? Why doesn't she say, why has all this evil stuff been going on on the island that I own? She should be saying this to Phil. It's to a, Phil. It's a very good what, question. We, what happened on our island, Phil? Don't you think we should, like, speak up and say, like, you know, we don't know nothing right. about it or we're, we're going to get it sorted out? Okay. Nothing. Absolutely. Bill, we've got nine minutes and there's a, there's a few things that I think we ought to ram into the programme. Yeah. Just sticking on, on politicians and what is it about? Money you've mentioned. Now, 
a figure which I think you said to me last night was that to keep a child in one of these young offenders institutions, so it's being run by Serco, the biggest company you've never heard of, and, and I think you said £175,000 a year. Right, well, that well, that's Serco. But then you've got councils that have um, secure um, children's homes, quarter of a million pounds. Quarter of up per, to, per up child to, per, per child up per to year. quarter of a million pound per child per year. You can go and foster a child, Brian. Okay, on the backs of buses now. Yeah. We were talking about it this yeah. morning. Um, got a spare bedroom? Are you over twenty-five? Why not foster a child? Yeah. So children. Not have you got children? Have you got a family? Could you accept a child into your family? A little, you know. Have you got a spare bedroom? Are yeah. you over 25, want to foster a child? Yeah. So they will get up to 500, uh, starts at about 400 and something pound a week per child, nearly 500 yeah. pound per week. A lot more if the kid's got learning disabilities or, or any kind of incapacities about yeah. it, a lot more. Yeah. So this is big, big profit. And that is why the kids have not been put out for adoption because the money is in the fostering. Yeah. Well, we, we know even, even with the legal fees around... Um, uh, family courts, we're talking about a minimum of £20 billion pounds a year. Crazy. And if we, if we tot, tot up the sort of figures that uh, Bill is talking about here, and please go away and, ch you know, audience, please go away and check this stuff yourself. We're also talking about um, tens of billions of pounds around. Children are big money. Yeah. Now, the oh, could, could, I, could I just say one thing quickly? Yeah. That People say to me, Bill, why, why do you think these people are killing the children? Why are they burying them? You know Lenny Harper's investigation, you know? Yeah. Lenny Harper's investigation. You must see, uh, you know, please watch Sun, Sea and Satan. If you don't watch any more of our work, just watch Sun, Sea and Satan. Um, you know, it's, um, it, they say to me, why do you think these people are killing these children, yeah. Bill? Because today's victims are tomorrow's witnesses. You've got to get your heads round this. Today's victims are tomorrow's witnesses. If you're, you've got a good life, but this, you've killed a child, it's going to come yeah. back on you. you. You know what I mean? Absolutely. If you, if you don't actually kill them. Right, let's get in our remaining little film clip if we, if we can. Oh. And this is where you have the opportunity to um, speak to Harriet Harman. Uh, to ask her a few questions. Harriet so, Harman and Ed Balls, or is it just Harriet Harman? Oh, it's Ed Balls as well, and uh, and also the union man whose name escapes Dave me. Dave Prentice. Right. So Dave we, Prentice. We've just about got time to get this clip right, in. Okay. Yeah. Um, Harriet, yes. right, can I, if I can just give you one minute. Sorry, We're talking about sorry, child sorry, abuse. Sorry. We'd just like to talk to you about um, the cuts and how it's going to affect child abuse. Harriet, you don't want to talk about child abuse. I understand it, Harriet, but you got, you're here to talk to people on the street, and we represent... So Harriet Harmon doesn't want to talk to us about child abuse she today. Didn't say that. Okay, she at the moment she doesn't. She didn't say well, that's what he said to me. Chance. I gave her a chance. I gave her a chance. Mind your own business. Let's go again. Let's go again. Let's go again. Chop, chop. This way. You've got to get the face. Get the face. <laughs> That's common assault, you'll get arrested for that. I'm a woman. Harriet, get on these. Harriet, I, Harriet, I need to push you on this. Harriet, why won't you talk to us about child abuse, Harriet? You're part of the you're you part of the government. Could, don't to touch me because that's don't you just touch me. To right, so Harriet, you are not Harriet is not willing to talk about child abuse. And what how are the cuts how are the cuts going to affect child abuse? How are the cuts? How are the cuts going to affect child abuse, Harriet? Harriet, 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 how are the cuts? How are the cuts going to affect child abuse, Harriet? How are the... I'm very sorry, she's talking to people who've come here for So, okay, so Harriet's gone to the police officer here, um, and we do carry a press pass, and Harriet Harmon does not today wish to talk to us about child abuse. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you, officer. That was Harriet Harman. She didn't want to talk to us about child abuse, and I think I know why. In 1978, when she became a solicitor, she urged the ministers to make it legal for people to be allowed to take sexually explicit images of children 
um, and she wanted that to be made legal as long as the children in the images hadn't been harmed or abused. So that's Harriet Harman. Harriet Harman was in favour of making sexually explicit images of children and she urged ministers to do that. So maybe that's why Harriet Harman didn't want to talk to us about child abuse. Thank you very much. It's Bill Maloney, and um, I represent a film company called Prime S Films, and we're interested in uh, what the cuts are going to do okay. against child abuse well, and young offenders institutions. Hey, mate, I think mate, it's very important hey. that we make I'm sure I'll talk to Ed, not you. You're here to talk to people. I'm just going to the BBC. Ed, I right. represent the lower working right. classes, and I'd like to know what you're going to do and what your government. Let that girl alone. I want to know what you're going to do to help child abuse. And you've been, you've been talked about this before. What are you going to do about child abuse in our young offenders institutes? Bill, yeah, so you don't want to talk about it. You, well, talk to me about it. Let go, let go. What are you going to do about institutional child abuse operating in this... Yeah, there you go. Well, so they, they don't want to talk about this. No, they, they, they don't want they, to talk at all. No, they don't. Right, we've got a couple of minutes, just a couple of quick um, uh, slides to put up. This one turns me cold. We now know what's been going on in the BBC. And this is the BBC a few years ago where the BBC were advertising children for adoption. They had a magazine called Families Wanted. I have a copy of that magazine. You open it, children being advertised like puppies or iPods. Yeah. Uh, where are these children? Where have they come from? Have they been willingly given up? So that's one. Um, the second one is that we know that the BBC is highly selective. It doesn't want to get involved with the Holly Gregg case. Uh, Down syndrome girl abused. The BBC doesn't, doesn't want to Once get involved. Once again, institutions. Right. And here is Kevin Annette. Um, a pastor who's been warning about the, the, the abuse of children in Canada, but with links back to Britain, he's now been banned from Britain. And, and links to the Crown as well. Our right. Queen and Prince Philip going out to Canada and taking ten children from the smart class of a school, and right. those kids never been seen again, and made to kiss our Queen's feet. Those are in Kevin and Nett's documentary. Bill, I'm going to thank you for coming thank on you, the programme. It's been a pleasure. What are we going to say people need to do about this? You have to go to, you need to get to, get to your MPs and you need to tell them that you want an amnesty. You want an amnesty for paedophiles that will come forward and expose paedophile rings. That will terrorise them. That is our terror tactics. Our terror tactics, like our government uses, against the paedophiles. Okay, and I think we're going to leave viewers and listeners with a simple comment that it's becoming obvious that in Britain in 2012, the paedophile rings aren't low-level paedophile rings. They are being supported and controlled and facilitated through the highest level of government and the establishment. Thank you. God bless all victims and survivors. Thanks, Bill.